Welcome to the Tesla Power Podcast, the unofficial Tesla energy community covering solar panels, solar roof, and power wall for your home. I'm Aaron Brady. Today, let's talk about selling your energy back to the grid, more details on the power wall plus, and yesterday was inspection day. Let's do it. We kick it off this week with audience participation time. It's time for your questions, your comments, your community input. You can participate by leaving a comment below, or you can call 203-816-5150. You can email teslapowerpodcast at gmail.com. This week, we have a comment from Marty Edwards. He writes, my name is Marty from Wolcott, Connecticut. In January this year, ordered four power walls with four kilowatt of solar. We already have eight kilowatt solar. It'll be connected to Eversource to allow them to take energy out if needed. They pay good for that, end quote. I'm telling you, I wish I had Eversource. I mean, I hear they have a great deal on power sharing back to the grid. And for those that don't know, Connecticut is a net metering state, which means that power companies are required to net out the power that we send to the grid versus the power we take from the grid. Now, this is better than buying at retail and then selling back at wholesale, but once you net out, there's no additional potential for payback. Eversource, however, has the demand response program where they'll pay up to $225 per kilowatt hour of energy you provide to the grid. That's awesome. Like quick napkin math on this means you can make, I mean, something like $30,000 a year. I mean, did they even do that math right? Here, let's go to their website. I've got their uh, website up here. Uh, at the demand response for home and battery storage page. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see the grid so that we can really, really dig into this. So you'll see they list 30 to 60 events per year. I mean, that's 45 average events, right? We want to see kind of conservatively how this is going to go. And they're um, assuming three hours per duration. And I don't know, let's assume we just provide one kilowatt hour at 225 bucks average, you know, maybe that price goes up over time, you know, as demand increases in the future. So let's do the calculations. Let me pull up the calculator. So we're talking 45 events times 225 bucks. And we're going to say we're doing three hours of one kilowatt each, $30,000. I mean, now this is what I'm talking about, you know, battery, uh, I, I don't know, battery solar roof with this kind of payback, it can't lose. <laughs> so I need to move. <laughs> I scrubbed the United Illuminating website. That's the utility I have. I scrubbed the interwebs in general, and there is no demand response or battery rebate program for that matter at uh, United Illuminating. Boo. But Marty's printing money, you know, adding battery with, you know, his now what 12 kilowatt system, we can see that Marty paid about 55,000 bucks. Let's get back to the uh, pages. So here designing about a 12 kilowatt system. I used a random address in Wolcott, his area. You can see 55 K out of pocket, about 25,000 after incentives. And now he's going to pull in 30 grand a year in the Eversource demand response program. He's printing money. It's, it's absolutely insane. In fact, you know what? I want to do a quick little workup on the Tesla solar roof option, right? So if we do that, let's go back to the uh, web page. We can see here that um, for the solar roof, cash out of pocket is going to be $95,000 after incentives. It comes down to 60 grand. So this system is paid for in just two years with that demand response program. I mean, that doesn't even consider the cost of a roof alternative. It doesn't cons you know, consider energy savings or the peace of mind that they'll never be without electricity. I mean, this is crazy good value. Marty, thank you for sharing your comment. It's incredible the deal you have in your area. And honestly, I don't see how anyone in your service area could pass this up. Keep us posted on your payback, your overall take in the coming years. I mean, it's almost like you're gonna be able to retire on that system. Really, really good deal. So that's our comment for this week. If you have something to ask or something to contribute, maybe you want to join the conversation, you can call 203-816-5150 or email teslapowerpodcast at gmail.com. 
Leave your name, where you're from, and say your thing. Let's take a quick break, and I'll be back with some news. So I was right that the Powerwall Plus is a battery and inverter stack. What I missed, however, is that the controller is also integrated. Now, shout out to Joe Ordia at Solar Surge for an education on the Powerwall Plus and how it ties into a wider solar home and grid system. He notes that this is a DC coupled system, but Tesla literature clearly states this is an AC battery system. I still recommend watching his video for a great run through on the pros and cons of AC and DC coupled setups. Link below. The big advantage, of course, with DC coupling is that there's no conversion loss between the solar array and the battery. SolarWall Plus will still run through the inverter first, but the power can no longer go directly to the house. So it goes through the battery first, right? Power requirements for a house can exceed the full solar array capacity anyway. Uh, you'll remember Marty's system was about 12 you know, kilowatts. Mine's is what, 13 and a half. And I mean, especially if you're charging a car, right? For sure, there's no way. And if you're running air conditioning, dryer, or the oven, all of the above, it's an even bigger issue if you're having to go through the battery first. This means the peak power delivery of five kilowatts per battery, which is what we had in the old uh, Powerwall 2, which was very competitive. It was very good compared with others. It simply won't cut it. You know, for one battery, for sure, really even two batteries. Of course, the Powerwall Plus now has nearly doubled that power output from five kilowatts to 9.4 kilowatts per battery. That makes one, I mean, let's be honest, really two batteries able to handle most peak load requirements for any house. Now, electric charge, uh, electric car charging is, is a complete aside. So, of course, the power storage capacity for the Powerwall Plus doesn't increase. It's still 13 and a half uh, kilowatt hours. So this is simply for passing the power from the solar array or for the grid to the house. So it's helpful to understand that simplifying the offering, right? Moving to this newer architecture can really uh, make it easier to install, right? It's going to help bring the labor cost down, significantly streamlining design implementation. And the whole idea is that it's going to allow deployments to scale more easily. So if we look at the photo again, let me, oh, we haven't even looked at it once, probably. Uh, we looked at it last week, but if we look at that photo, I've got it here. You can see that the power flow here, the power flow comes down from the solar array into the inverter battery stack. Power is then able to be uh, sent to both the panel and the grid via the gateway. I believe this also removes the need for a main shutoff switch. The gateway serves as that shutoff. This, um, you know, you're never going to have solar panel. Uh, you're never going to have solar power going straight out of your house onto the grid. It's always going to go to the battery first. So um, no main shutoff is going to be required. And of course, that makes the Powerwall Plus the center of the power structure for the home. Tesla is going to need to up production in a significant way to keep up. I mean, what have they done? This bottleneck is now the size of a pencil neck with demand growing. I, I don't ever see how they keep up with demand. Anyway, super quick news week. After another quick break, let's get into some details on inspection day. Yesterday was inspection day. Dave, one of the electricians from Tesla, and Mike, my local inspector, joined me here for a nerd fest on solar, batteries, and the cool new roof. <laughs> Dave was here an hour early to label everything, take photos, prep for the inspection. We had a bit of extra time to gab about recent changes as well, but more on that in a little bit. Inspection was really smooth. Mike asked to see the drawings. Uh, he wanted to see the photos. And we went through the system to make sure the drawings, photos, and items in front of them were all consistent. So we switched the system on to test its performance. Uh, we wanted to monitor energy flow and make sure the batteries were charging. Once Mike was satisfied though, he peaced out and Dave was left to give me the final tour before PTO, which is permission to operate. And now that the inspection's done, we have our final invoice from Tesla and we await our new meter from the utility. We're still another 
I don't know, a couple weeks from permission to operate, Dave estimates. But you'll see uh, that we got to see our peak production. So I want to move over to... Our peak production here, you can see that we were able to produce 9.1 kilowatts from the solar roof, and we were able to get the batteries charged up to 93%, right, before shutting the system back down after inspection. And that was one thing Dave was really, you know, um, excited about. He was like, you know, you own this system, you should have some power in your batteries so that you can take advantage of it if you guys have any kind of uh, power outage. So that was super awesome of him. Uh, over the last week, we've had very consistent energy usage. If I go up through this, you can see I go back as far as May 6th. You can see our energy usage is very consistently between 20 and 30 kilowatt hours per day. Um, even coming up to Mother's Day right here, we just barely, you know, broke 30 kilowatts. I mean, on Mother's Day, I was doing a bunch of sauteing, roasting, broiling, you know, baking, barely broke the 30 kilowatt hours. It's only on the days that we charge the car that things get a little bit up there. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see how production and consumption balance out once we get uh, PTO. So Dave was awesome. Uh, he's like, I'm in my 60s and I'm doing my dream job. I pinch myself every day. I mean, his enthusiasm made for some really great conversation. Uh, we went all the way back to the Solyndra days when the future of solar was a lot less of a certainty than it is today. And before solar panels, you know, became so cheap, you know, he remembers panels that struggled to get to a hundred kilowatts and now panels are, you know, 400 kilowatts and some are above, you know, it's been tremendous growth, tremendous change over the last 15 years or so. And he doesn't see that slowing down. I mean, he's part of Tesla. He's largely at the sharp edge of that change and it's pretty exhilarating for him and, right? For all of us. That's why we're here. So it was very interesting uh, bit of conversation, um, especially when we got talking about the Tesla inverters. Now he was pointing out that it's cutting edge tech, but I interrupted him. I was like, hold on. Isn't the string inverter thing older tech? Like, wouldn't it be higher tech if we were using like micro inverters or optimizers? He had a great answer. He was like, yes, string inverters are older tech, but take a look inside the inverter and you'll see how high tech this thing is. So the chamber's sealed, it's actively cooled, and it's the same tech that they're putting into their cars. And you know what kind of scale they're producing producing these things at. So he got me thinking about it, uh, doing a deep dive into the inverter tech so I can take a, you know, get a better understanding of the tech advantage Tesla has, even though it's using like the older string inverter architecture. Video on that coming soon. So it was a fun day, and Dave was an excellent tour guide. Thank you very much for your help. So we'll have another update when we get the new meter and official permission to operate. Uh, I wanna help inform your decision and enhance your experience and satisfy that vicarious curiosity as we move through the process. And that's episode five of the Tesla Power Podcast, the unofficial Tesla Energy Community. I'm Aaron Brady, let's do this again next week.